With the regular season finale upon us, what was your favorite memory of the 2023-24 season? We'll preview tonight's game against the Blues, and we play Shooting Star for the final time. That and more coming up next on Locked on Stars. Your Locked on Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy Stars fans and welcome back to another episode of Locked On Stars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. It's a pleasure to be with you. I'm Joey Erickson, former producer of 105 Through the Fan. Please be sure to subscribe. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. And as always, thank you so much for making us a part of your day and making us your first listen. With a victory tonight, the Dallas Stars will be crowned Western Conference champions. They actually just need a point to win the Western Conference and secure home ice advantage throughout the first three rounds of the Stanley Cup playoffs. We still don't know the first round opponent for the Dallas Stars. That won't be decided until the conclusion of Thursday night's game, so continue to be on the lookout for that, but it has been an incredible regular season already for the Dallas Stars. They have won the Central Division for the first time since 2015-16, so I thought we should reminisce. What were some of your favorite moments, your favorite memories of this regular season before it all gets zeroed out and the Stanley Cup playoffs begin on on Saturday, the energy continues to build and it is just right around the corner. Stars fans, today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code locked on NHL for $20 off your first purchase. I do want to set the table a bit. So the Stars have to pick up a point to win the West, as I just mentioned, and that's because Vancouver beat. Calgary last night and if Vancouver happens to beat the Jets on Thursday and let's say the Stars lose tonight then Vancouver would hold the tiebreaker over the Stars and that means it looks like Dallas would play Nashville Vegas jumped over the Kings they're now third in the Pacific Division and if the playoffs started today the Dallas Stars would take on the LA Kings so a lot of moving parts are still happening here in the final days of the regular season. And it seems like it's all happenstance at this point. And by Thursday night, by Friday, we will know the first round opponent for the Dallas Stars. But there were so many phenomenal moments in this regular season. And of course, Dallas is 51, 21, and 9 this season. That is good enough for 111 points and arguably the toughest division in all of the National Hockey League. And there's a few moments that stick out to me if you're a Stars fan. Recently, the eight-game winning streak was phenomenal. They broke that franchise record, which lasted forever. They have not been able to, to break that one, even though they've tied it a few times recently. That was something that was amazing. But there's a few games, and I don't know why they stick out to me. Maybe it was because I was in, ten, in attendance of them, but right around Christmas, and maybe it just felt like, a turning point in the season for me. And of course, the Stars have been steadily in the top three of the Central Division all season long. But right around Christmas, they had two really, really big games against Seattle and Vancouver. And that was when Otter went down a week prior and Wedgwood was playing out of his mind. And the Stars won both of those games four to three. And of course, you had Thomas Harley with the OT winner against Seattle. And then just a few days later, Harley returns the favor to Matt Duchesne for the game-winning goal. And the Stars win both of those games by final score of four to three. And Dallas ended up being 19 eight and four at that time. And it just felt like those were two huge games. They beat two very quality opponents. We know Seattle was um, not as good as last season, but still put up a really good fight in that game. Vancouver was the number one team in the NHL at that point in time, if I'm not mistaken. And the Stars were able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Dimko in the Canucks, Scott Wedgwood, uh, has a phenomenal game against the Canucks and the Stars win that game 
four to three. Uh, those two really, really stick out in my mind. And I'm core, and of course, probably going to those games <laughs> certainly uh, brings that to the forefront. Um, you, you look right around New Year's. That was a great time too against the Blackhawks when the Stars took care of Chicago a couple of times. Rope Hens Hattrick, Mason Marchment Hattrick. Uh, he had a bit of a, a funky hat trick that night and of course the new year's eve celebration is always phenomenal at the american airline center a great crowd on hand to witness that was um was a phenomenal uh, moment throughout the the regular season as well uh minnesota the the two times they crushed them back to back four to nothing uh, on the road, and then 7-2 to two at home, and Dallas just continues to own the wild. That always feels good <laughs> when you beat um, such a, a heated rival uh, in your division. There was a, a lot of things that, that stick out. Um, specific games where a lot of guys had factors in, specifically the San Jose game from a few months ago when the Stars trailed by three with what was it under eight minutes to go? And then Wyatt Johnston and Logan Stankoven just came out of nowhere and said, we are not going to lose to the Sharks tonight. Of course, Johnston picks up the hat trick there. Uh, he picks up uh, the, the five point night, I believe. And, and Dallas somehow sneaks out of there with a seven, six win uh, over the San, o San Jose Sharks. Uh, that was an incredible game. Should not have been a, uh, as close of a game, but um, uh, that's just, uh, that's just the, the way it goes sometimes. Uh, the Logan Stankoven debut was awesome. Uh, of course, just the, the energy and the spark that he provided um, cannot be overstated and probably a reason why the Stars are where they are now. He came in at a point when Dallas needed a spark. They were struggling, and I like to compare it to Evan Carter of last summer with the Texas Rangers. Rangers really struggled, and they weren't playing very good heading into the postseason last year. Um, I think a lot of people forget that. They were not playing their best baseball. They lost the division on the final day of the regular season, fly to Tampa Bay, and then, of course, they go on that phenomenal journey to, the, to become World Series champions. The Stars, of course, are playing very, very well heading into the postseason, but they were struggling in February. They ended up in third place in the Central at one point. Stankoven comes in. Then Jamie Benn and Wyatt Johnston and Stan Coven just all of a sudden are the team's best trio taking over games and still are at some points. And, and then they go on that phenomenal run into March. But that game against Carolina was huge, winning two to one. Stop the bleeding a bit after losing four in a row. They ended up losing to New York and Colorado after the win against Carolina. But then we know about the, the incredible run they went on in the month of March. So, uh, of course, that was a turning point. And I think my favorite memory of this season, or at least um, in the moments, just in being present, I should say, was the Chris Tanev trade. I sat down on my bed. I had my pork chop ready to go. I had wild rice and macaroni and cheese as my sides. Yes, I cook my own dinner sometimes, and I was ready to indulge, watch The Office, just hang out. And, of course, it was around the trade deadline, so I was constantly checking Twitter and all that good stuff. And then, of course, it finally hits. It finally hit. Chris Tanev is a Dallas star, and I was beaming. I was running around the house completely, completely thrilled at the Dallas Stars made a splash at the trade deadline. And those type of deals, um, just they, they just get you so excited for what's to come, right? You, you get ahead of yourself. Like, oh, where is he going to play? Where is he going to fit in? What are the pairings going to look like? How is this going to help the Stars defensively? How is this going to help the Stars overall? And, of course, he's had a huge impact. He's had a great impact on the Dallas Stars. And I think that one, hands down, will probably go down as, as my favorite memory of this season. 
just because the excitement of getting that guy, like he was a heavy, heavy target for a lot of teams. There was a ton of rumors about Toronto wanting to get him and Hannafin. The Golden Knights, I think, were a team that were rumored to be in on him. Of course, they got his partner and Hannafin, who just inked an eight-year deal with Vegas. But just making a splash, general manager Jim, in the way he did it with the salary retainment, did not have to give up a top prospect. Um, and he was an immediate fit, an immediate fit. And it got you excited about what was to come, especially in a time of sort of despair around the stars. They were going through injuries. They weren't winning a, a ton. They they were playing well, but not winning either. And it was um, it was a pretty tough time in February. And that just seemed to, I think, inject life into us as a fan base, as someone that is watching the stars, covering the stars every single day. And I think it injected life into the locker room. Knowing the front office trust them to make a run. And maybe they didn't need that. Maybe they would have done it all without Chris Tanev, but it certainly did not hurt. And that was um that was a great moment, just of hope, right? Of of what could be. Because we felt really good about the stars, right? I I I mean, they they were of course you know in, in the topic of conversation, uh, top ten in the NHL, but I think I made the statement multiple times. The Stars were not good enough to win the Stanley Cup with the defensive core at that time. I made it known multiple times, even though they were a very good team. That, that, that wasn't an argument. They were a great team, but they could not win the Stanley Cup in their current version. And it just feels like Tanev has kind of filled that void, and now they are. They are good enough to, to win the Stanley Cup. I believe they are. And that question still has to be answered here in the next month or month and a half, however long this journey will be. But that was um, a phenomenal moment. And maybe there are some others that stick out to you. Please let me know what um, some of your favorite memories were from this past season. And they had a little bit of everything. Uh, opening night, <laughs> they, they take down the Blues 2-1 to one in a shootout. Incredible game between Bennington and and Ottinger. That was a great game to begin the season. You have the blowouts of Minnesota, of Tampa Bay, of Nashville, um, and then they had some heartbreakers in there, and they had some very close victories like the ones I mentioned uh, just just before Christmas. There was, um, there was a lot. There was a lot that went on, and uh, maybe there's a, a certain moment or a certain play. I think Otter save against Arizona, the paddle save, how incredible that was is a, is a highlight that sticks out to me. Um, not a ton of others that that really come to come to mind. The, the game against New York when they erased that three nothing deficit was um, was was a good one too. Would love to hear your thoughts if there was any others that really really stood out to you. Um, it also feels like a, a season where there's just kind of been a little bit of everything where there was multiple guys that kind of stepped up and we've talked about this, just how balanced they are, eight 20 goal scores. And, and there's not one singular thing that sticks out. I feel like to me, it's not like, Oh yeah, that, that was the moment of the regular season. And maybe it's the the game against San Jose and just Wyatt Johnson going complete sicko mode. Right. Um, or, or maybe it's something else. Right. And maybe that's a good thing. There's not a singular play or singular player driving this team it's a lot of them it's one team it's a it's a um it's a group of individuals as i'm trying to get philosophical here it's not good so i'm gonna cut it out right there and we're gonna move on <laughs> the dallas stars Taking on the St. Louis Blues, they book in the 2023-24 season against the Blues. With a point tonight, they will win the Western Conference. Let's take a look at those Blues, and let's take a look at game number 82 in just a moment. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is obsessed with finding you ways to save money on tickets. Go ahead and... Download the Game Time app, 
It takes 30 seconds. Go on your smartphone, get to the Google Play Store, get to the Apple Store, and go ahead and download Game Time. It's now the authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. I'm ready to go to a Texas Rangers game when I return home. I'm going to go right to Game Time. Go ahead, find the best deals on tickets all the way up to first pitch and it shows you the seat before you buy so you know you're not going to get a railing a piece of glass whatever it is in front of you the great thing about globe life field is as well i don't even know if there's a bad seat in the house frankly i haven't sat everywhere but every place that i've been to has been phenomenal so far so go ahead download the game time app it gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase it's not just major league baseball you got the stanley cup playoffs Uh, Who am I kidding? You got the Dallas Stars. They're ready to go. Go enjoy a game at the American Airlines Center. The Dallas Mavericks are about to be in the first round of the NBA playoffs. They're playing the Clippers. I mean, it's a great time to be a DFW sports fan. So download the Game Time app. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets and get $20 off your first order when you use the code LOCKEDONNHL. Turns apply. Again, create an account. Redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-H-L for $20 off. Download Game Time, the app today. Last-minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Hey, Stars fans, I do want to remind you that it's Locked On's NFL Mock Draft Live tonight at 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So 6 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. It's streaming on the Locked On Sports 24-7 streaming channel. It's on YouTube. It's also on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. You're going to have college football experts. There's even going to be a fantasy football angle. It's the latest NFL mock draft from Locked On. Great stuff. Be sure to check that out. As the uh, NFL draft is about a week uh, a week away, uh, which is pretty crazy. And um, the Stanley Cup playoffs is less than a week away. And that's what we're focusing on here. But we will focus tonight against the St. Louis Blues. The Dallas Stars are hoping to at least pick up a point. Let's go ahead and just win the whole darn thing, and then you will be crowned Western Conference champions. Can you believe it uh, that the Dallas Stars are in this position? Uh, I I, I did not think they would have had a chance to win the West. Uh, Win the Central, absolutely. I thought they were going to to win the Central uh, this season. Win the West, um, I don't know. I just thought there was a a few other teams um, that were going to to have better runs. And you know what? That's my bad. I take full accountability for that um, just poor taste in in my predictions. The St. Louis Blues, however, are not going to be in the playoffs this season. They've dealt with some injuries to some pretty uh, key players, but... Uh, they, they hung around for a while, but uh, just not good enough. Robert Thomas is excellent. He has 85 points in, in 81 games this season. He's having a heck of a, a season. Their young gun, Jordan Cairo, is also having a, a phenomenal year, uh, 67 points. They have a lot of young talent with with. Kairou and Thomas uh, Buchnevich, who is in his prime. And uh, the Blues enter tonight's game 43-33-5 with 91 points. Thomas is 10 points, by the way, in his last five games. He is um, on a tear. They've had a, a really good... Uh, a really good season from Jordan Bennington. Bit of a bounce back, 28-21-4 and four this year, 2.88 goals against, and a line uh, 11 save percentage. He seems to always turn it up against the Stars, too. We talk about that game um, back in, uh, back on opening nights, and, and the Blues have uh, beat the Stars a couple of times this this year. Uh, Stars being an opening night two to one, then they lost an OT four to three, and then the the Stars last uh, lost the last matchup, which was back in December. So it's it's been a while, um, and the Blues took that one by a final score of two to one, and uh, of course. St. Louis would love to play spoiler a bit too, right? Um, There is some ramifications if the Stars don't necessarily win, as I mentioned, depending on the result of Vancouver-Winnipeg tomorrow. If Vancouver wins and the Stars don't get a point, uh, they will have the tiebreaker, which is regular uh, regulation wins, excuse me. The Canucks have 44 um, and, and the Stars have 40 entering tonight. Um, either way, the, the Stars will take on a wild card team, and it looks like it's going to be Nashville or L.A., but, but you never know. Uh, Vegas still has one more game 
on Thursday as well. Vegas will play the Ducks. So you think they're going to win that game. And the Kings are playing the Blackhawks, which you think they're going to win that game as well. So more than likely, it's probably going to stay put. But we all know crazy things can happen, especially on the final day of the regular season. So the Stars are just looking to lock up the Western Conference tonight. Uh, Blues haven't scored a ton. They rank 24th uh, this season in goals per game. They're right around middle of the pack for for goals against. Um, Their their power plays just below league average. So is is their penalty kill. Um, they've, they've, They've scored... At times, uh, with with some of their their young guys in in pretty big moments, but they just haven't got enough of it, right? They've just been kind of hovering um, around, and and they've still had a good season, right? I, I mean, ninety one points is is nothing to scoff at, but it's just not good enough to to get into the the Western Conference uh, playoff picture uh, this season. They have a, a few guys that have been banged up. Uh, Tory Krug, um, he missed. Uh, Sunday's game against Seattle. We'll see how he's able to get on. Jake Neighbors is another one that uh, missed um, Sunday's game against Seattle. So they may have a, a few guys that, that are not in the lineup, but um, just a, a team that's kind of mixed with old and new, and they're kind of retooling, trying to, to find themselves. And they'll be, they'll be having some interesting conversations, uh, I feel like, in the next few years. Bennington's 30 now, and He's still really, really good. I mean, played in 56 games um, this season, and they have some really talented young guys that are kind of on their way up, and they just have some some real talented scorers. They just kind of have to figure out uh, who they can sort of build around, right? They it just they, They've lost a lot of pieces here um, since winning that Stanley Cup, right? And, and they're just trying to – find a way to to make it all work. Um, and the Stars are a little bit opposite, right? They're, they're built and, and kind of uh, ready to go. Of course, Stars coming off a 3-1 win um, against the Kraken uh, last time out and uh, a chance to, to win the Western Conference. And um, uh, it looks like Jason Robertson doesn't look like he will win the uh, scoring title for the Dallas Stars this season. He comes into tonight's game with 80 points. Look at Joe Pavelski at 67. <laughs> Joe Pavelski is still a top five scorer at 39 years old. And the, the players he's surrounded by are hilarious. Robertson, 24. Johnston, 20. Hens, 27. Uh, the, the, the closest would be Duchesne or, or Jamie Ben, who has 60 points and he's 34 years of age. And Joe is at 27 goals <laughs> and, uh, um, he just, he doesn't slow down. He continues to produce. It, it, it really is remarkable. Um, and as someone that watches him on a night and night basis, we probably don't give him enough credit, uh, for, for what he does, but it, it truly is insane what he has um has done in in his career um um and another season under his belt another season under his belt uh tonight's game is on tnt by the way a national televised game the dallas stars finale against the blues you can catch the game on sirius xm on the sxm app as well just search stars and you can find josh and razor for that one but a national tv broadcast the dallas stars wrapping up the regular season tonight game 82 a point a win guarantees them home ice advantage for the first three rounds, and they will have some more banners to put up Western Conference champs. But that's not the banner they are looking for, of course. Let's go ahead, wrap up today's episode with Shooting Star, the final time this season. Let me know your picks in the comment section below, and I'll tell you mine in just a moment. Hey, Stars fans, it's time for you to check out Monopoly Go. Monopoly Go is for all of you that have a competitive side. I've been told I'm a competitive person quite a bit. And look, we all have that side to ourselves. And the best thing about that competitive side is you can play Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. It's a great twist on Monopoly where you can play 
on not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations. You can build up amazing cities that bring you big money. But the best part is you can mess with your friends as well. You can charge them rent on some of your iconic properties, just like classic Monopoly. But now you can also rob their vaults for riches yourself. And the leaderboards show me the biggest Monopoly tycoon ever. So there's so many different sides of Monopoly Go. And it's so amazing if you're a competitive like myself. You can team up with friends and people all around the world in time tournaments to earn huge rewards. So get the game and join your friends. Download Monopoly Go now free on the App Store or Google Play. Download Monopoly Go. It's free on the App Store or Google Play. The final shooting star of the season. Going to tear up announcing our last pick. It has been a wonderful, wonderful year. But the job is certainly not done. Some great content coming your way for the Stanley Cup playoffs. Am very, very excited for what is to come. And it just feels like it's going to be um, a special playoff journey. It, for, for a lot of reasons. Um, not just the stars. I just think. The playoffs are going to be in a great spot. And the first round is is the moneymaker for this league. It really is. It just, it's just the best. It's just the best. You, you never know what's going to happen. And there's always a twist. And um, just cannot wait to to watch it all play out here um, here in the in the next few weeks or so. But at the task at hand, shooting star, who will lead the Dallas Stars, hopefully to victory tonight and the Western Conference title. And I'm going to go with someone that's had a lot of great regular season finales in his career. Of course, he he won the Art Ross when he did it a few years ago. And I'm going to go with the captain, Jamie Benn. On home ice, Jamie Benn goes out with a bang tonight, and hopefully that continues into the Stanley Cup playoffs. He's at 21 goals this season. He's got 39 points, uh, another 60-point campaign for the captain. Uh, Feels like 14, just going to have a big night. Hopefully, it's a a game winner against Bennington. And uh, the Dallas Stars go home happy with a victory to wrap up their season. And um, then they're well-prepared and a well-oiled machine for Saturday when the first round comes to town. So I'm going with Jamie Ben. Give me uh, the captain uh, for my final shooting star pick of the night. Let me know in the comment uh, section below who your shooting star will be tonight. Well, the stars could play LA. They could play Vegas. They could play Nashville. We don't quite know. We will find out the answer tomorrow night at the conclusion of uh, the Vegas Ducks game and the Kings Blackhawks game. So still still a few more things that have to be uh, decided, but the Stars are already in a great spot. And at this point, you have to deal with the cards you're dealt and, and find a way to win 16 games, right? You got to find a way to win 16 games. Um, by the way, some excitement maybe on Friday. Um, nothing confirmed as of yet, but maybe doing a crossover episode with our first round opponents um, podcast. So it could be locked on Kings, could be lost on Vegas. Who knows? Even even Nashville. Um, uh, supposed to try to work something together here to do a crossover episode just to preview the first round. So be on the lookout uh, look out for that. Um, and I think that would be great just for uh, us to kind of get an idea of what the team we're playing against. And, of course, I'm going to be back in the stars as best to my ability. And um, we'll get ready to uh, begin this thing, man. Can't believe it. Game 82 here tonight, Stars versus Blues. Have a great rest of your day. Enjoy tonight's finale. And then, of course, we'll see you on Thursday. So long, everybody.